Hello everyone, I hope this is on. Hi, I'm Matthias. You may have seen me for the first time right now because this, this is the first NGD stream I am doing and actually my first stream, Twitch stream ever. So I'm not 100% sure if I am talking to a wall right now or if I'm talking to the viewers. So it would be nice if one of you could write in the chat whether I am on or not, whether you can hear me right now. Nice, go often. Thanks. I see some of you are, are already there. Bear with me if I do some mistakes on the technical part. Also on the go part, you can tell me if I do some mistakes. That would also be helpful, sure. I have here an empty board and I will talk about basically the opening today. And um, as you can see in the lecture title, flexibility in the opening. So let me first have some monologue about why I think this is an important lecture topic and why I chose this topic. So when I watch um, yeah, many games, when I review games, I see that oftentimes um, people already lose a game in the opening and that is what we want to try to avoid today by being more flexible because what I see a lot is that people just um, enter some variations that are very complicated. So I guess if I show you this, you will already know what I am talking about. Maybe some of you have entered this and didn't really know the, the result, how it is supposed to happen. Um, I, to be honest, have had this on a real game board only once and I managed to somehow put that one variation on the board that I knew, probably my opponent only knew that variation as well and we somehow managed to not um, destroy the game completely. But um, yeah, this is something that I would always try to avoid because I hate losing a game because of some book knowledge that I didn't know or maybe there is not a book about this yet. Actually, there might be a book about this soon. There is probably already a book about this. Um, but um, yeah, I hate losing a game because of this kind of um, failure, because of some knowledge competition where um, my opponent just studied the Joseki better. And um, to me, that's not go. That's basically just a knowledge competition. That's, that's not the beauty of the game. So um, yeah, I would always try to avoid these kind of variations where I don't know exactly what is going to happen. And um, to do that, we need to be flexible. We need to know how to um, put the game to a direction that we like. So this is also one important thing about flexibility in the opening. Um, oftentimes I see people get lost in some variations that maybe they even know and they, they manage to somehow, all right, we, we somehow made it to come to... Wait, how does this go again? I think something weird like this. I think I've seen this. All right. But then they didn't even like the result for black, for example, because they are not the type of player that go for an influence. So in general, I guess maybe not every one of you, but most of you kind of know what they like. If they like the solid territory or whether they prefer um, to, to take more influence. So if you know this, you should oftentimes in the opening or always, if you can, try to lead the direction into the game, into a direction that you like. And um, if you just get lost in some variations because you just want to play the variations, very oftentimes you will not get the game you like and you will actually end up, um, yeah, maybe even hating what you what you did there um, just because you wanted to follow some variations. And um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about how to maybe avoid these complicated variations by um, oftentimes it has a lot to do with tenuking early on in the variations. So 
for example, I mean, many of you will probably have seen um, this, where white tinook is this. Let me check once if I'm still on and if everything is going normal, because who knows, maybe something went wrong. No, I'm still there. That's nice. And you're still there. By the way, I cannot check the chat all the time. I will have to choose myself when to check the chat. So, of course, you can always um, ask questions, but it might take like five minutes or so for me to actually read it. So let me right now read one. Like in chess, where an opponent is more prepared in some line of a certain opening, which they blitz out. Yes, that is... Um, the perfect example in chess this is even more the case but in go actually we have this flexibility we don't have to fall for these prepared variations and that's also a very important reasoning why we need flexibility because of course when the opponent has some weird opening prepared they will know more variations for example i don't know maybe this is not the best example but yeah there are many variations here and there used to be so many professional games even where this happened all the time and it felt like this was the only way you could actually start a game and not be embarrassed about it but this is so strange like why do we need to play here what is wrong with just playing here for example i mean okay maybe the game will go into a direction where the ai thinks you're losing by like half a point but we really shouldn't focus on this um so much because the mistakes happen in the in the uh, middle game or the mistakes that happen in the middle game are so huge um most of the times that that these kind of differences only make a difference when you're actually one of the best players in the world so yeah, let's. Um, I, I prepared some game examples of my own games. Most of them are actually games I played against Jeff and against Anti. So um, we will see very flexible openings. I think those two are actually quite um, quite good examples of how to be flexible in the opening. I learned already something from them, so some of my games have that as well. Um, yeah. But let me continue with my monologue first. Um, the the um, yeah, what I want to mention as well is we cannot know all the Josekis. There is always some surprise. I mean, that's at least what I experienced in the in the simplest Josekis, where somebody all of a sudden played some move that eventually was very complicated, and I didn't know, and and then I had to f try to find. A solution myself but I didn't know the variation and that's why I really like to not start these complicated fights because there's always a surprise so let me talk to you about my biggest enemy enemy which is this one I mean many of you will have seen this and I used to play this also as uh, white and I mean, to be honest, I rarely experienced a game where I completely collapsed, but after all, it was always risky. And I have seen even games of um, some fellow EGF professionals where they played this. And um, actually, one of them ended up collapsing completely and lost the game because of this variation. And to me, this was so strange because I was like, why do you play this if you don't know the variations? Well, because you cannot know all the variations. There are so many moves, for example, this white plays here. Now, many of you will maybe block, but there is some stuff when black plays here and then there can be an inside fighting. There's also this cut left. So you really have to know the variations to be confident in them. And my theory is nobody really knows all the variations, but the people that play it just play it because they want to scare the opponent and they want to basically um, yeah, pretend that they know it and make the opponent scared and uh, eventually nobody really knows it and in the end it is oftentimes a competition about who reads better and very early on in the opening and I don't like to have these kind of competitions that early on already. 
So what I do as white, for example, very often times I will just play this. And I will Atari from the outside. Atari here and then, I mean, then I can choose. Mainly the most common move is probably this one. This we will also see in some um, example. And I like to play this as white because well, you may tell me that this is a bit worse on the AI, but I'm not even so sure. And actually, if Black just plays something like this, this is a super normal variation where where both are happy or maybe not extremely happy, but it's just it's just peaceful and and simple, and I can continue the game. So that's, for example, how I like to avoid this. I rarely play this one actually and now you may tell me ah but isn't it so sad that you will never be able to play this move well I don't care I don't need to enter this kind of competition in a serious game at least when when I play some blitz games or some fast games of course then it's the moment to to try this out um, and eventually I will also I mean I also feel a bit bad that I don't know all the variations here but we cannot know all the variations. Uh, that's basically what I say, what I'm trying to tell you. So I just accepted that, well, maybe in the next few tournaments, I will not play this move when my opponent plays here, but I'd rather play here or I will Tenuki. So here we come to the next topic, uh, which is basically Tenukiing in Josekis, which all of you have done already, but, um, yeah, I I want to remind you that this is always an option. I mean, even in this case, black pincers, you tenuki. And then what, what is so scary about black's next move? Black will play here. Okay, then I tenuki again. And this. This has happened in um, many, maybe a bit older professional games. I have seen this. Um, and this is quite strong for black, but you need to never forget how much a move somewhere else values in the opening i mean basically black has three more moves on the left side and there's still a bit that white can do maybe with this hane and atari or if black plays the proper move which is the extent you can maybe come from this direction and pressure um the the one stone so there's even after three more moves of the opponent, there's still something that you can do. And more happily, you didn't lose the game right away. Um, or if you don't like this because you think black is way too strong, well, then you can also run out now. So you go out and then black has to choose. Do I go a bit more aggressive but leave the weakness behind? Then he will play here. Or do I play more safe? Well, if black plays here, then I guess many of you know a nice move, which is this one as white, to keep black low. If black just answers like this, you can still get these forcing moves and just get out. Maybe, maybe like this, or you can also play from the other side. I mean, it always depends on what else is on the board. So there's also the option to Tenuki only once and then continue. If black plays here, actually I'm also more happy because there is this cutting left, but I cannot do it right away. I have to first maybe get out something like this. And then black has the cutting behind and I'm out. Let us talk about this one next. So, of course, we all know this move exists, but actually there is a game I recently played. Yeah, let me open that one if I can find it. Is it this one? Oh, yes, it's this one. All right. This happens very often. So we have this exchange for this and then black goes into the corner. And then we played out some variation here, whatever. And white gets to pincer next. 
So, what can Black do? Black Tenuki, once again, no problem. Because Black is also building something huge. If White just continues playing, White can do that, but Black will get big moves as well. So, I decided to grow in a bigger scale, and then Black decided to move the stone. This is one option. I want to talk about another option, which is this one. Actually, if Black plays here, White's only really acceptable choice, kind of, is to let Black live. Like this, the Black group is alive, and um, yeah, White has Sente again, and some influence. If White plays this one, then the exchange locally is quite good for Black, so later Black can choose whether to maybe go for the corner living, like this, or maybe Black prefers to just save the stone and get another good exchange. So whenever there is some option, it's not so nice to, to yeah, I mean, Black has the choice. It's always nice to have a choice, um, I guess. <laughs> so this move is not very common. That's why we usually take the, take the outside. So that's something that Black can actually always kind of do still. Also, this move exists to ask White a difficult question, whether White wants to go in here, but there's a peep left later, or whether White wants to make a good shape, but then there is eye space left um, for, for later, if the group gets even weaker. But my opponent chose this move, to which I answered like this and this, very normal stuff. And Black just got a shape on the outside. And now Black tenuki it again. Can you imagine? He tenuki me twice. So I got mad. I had to attack him. I played this move. He calmly responded. I defended and he tenuki it again. Ah, I was so mad at my opponent after he did this. You cannot imagine. But let's look at this. Can White really attack this group? I mean, there is some weakness, for example, here. If black cuts and simply Ataris, or okay, let's do it properly. Black can also play this move, which is very annoying. And if white cuts, yeah, okay. Maybe play here, all right, and then like this. Okay, this is maybe still a bit risky, but black can run out as well. play like this and now this is sent and it will become a mess but in general as you can see in theory black can even just play super super safe and still live this is basically a life um, black can just answer here and this is an eye so yeah if I do this, I already wasted all of the attacking and I don't even want to do that. And of course, if I come from the outside, black can just run. So here, black used a very nice technique of tenuking often in the opening to get more moves. You always have to evaluate, is this move really bigger than um, than this jump. I mean, this jump is also quite valuable, so it's not like I lost the game here. Uh, Black could have also jumped and then jumped again. You have to evaluate. Is this one more valuable than this second Tenuki? Or no, actually what Black did was first enforce and once, threaten the cut and then Tenuki. Yeah, I mean, it's not like White lost a lot, but Black got a kind of game that he likes, which is to have a weak group that can hardly be attacked. Actually, as white, I was in a kind of difficult position here because um, my opponent got a lot of influence and I felt like I had to invade here next. And 
it is kind of sad that I cannot attack the group, but I have to wait. So let me check for some... Uh... Ah, yeah, the one with Davide. Yes, that is Davide, my opponent. I'm reading the chat. I have to do it... Um... I have to do it like this, I'm sorry. I'm reading the chat now. Some nice comments, but no really important question yet. So I will continue. So yeah, this is this example where we try to be flexible with groups in the beginning. That can also be risky. I mean, you really have to evaluate whether the group is weak or, or not. I mean, sometimes you can just die. So be cautious with this. All right, let's go to another game. This is a game I played against my fellow teacher, Jeff. We always have nice openings, I think. That's more like his, his merit, I'd say. He plays the interesting stuff. I don't do so much. But in this case, I was the one who did something a little bit interesting. Let's say here. So another way to be flexible is to finish an op uh, uh, Joseki early on, even though it's not, and to accept a locally a little worse result. So I like to do this sometimes in the Sun Sun to push three times here and then to Tenuki. So the idea is if black plays here, actually I can still Tenuki one more time because my group is still alive if black adds another stone. Like this, white is alive and there is no really, I mean, black even has a cut left that black wants to defend. If black defends it, then I can even get another move. So yeah, I Tenuki two times to get a locally, I mean, we can all agree that this is locally actually quite terrible for white. White just lived and black is super, super strong, but you should never forget that white got those two extra moves that that also value something. Um, yeah, so that's something you can do. There is another example where I like to do this that I want to show right now, which goes something like this. I guess many of you have seen this, this kind of uh, Kema. And very often we see this result, um, which is basically Gote for black. Um, and it's just normal, but as white, I feel oftentimes very flexible now because I can choose whether to attack from here, whether I want to, no, this move doesn't exist, push from above, or whether I want to maybe take some cash in the corner if black lets me. So what black can also do, which is quite common, well, I don't know how common it is. Let's be honest. I have seen it quite sometimes and I have done it. Is to push once and then Tenuki. So black accepts the locally worst result to get another move. And if black blocks here, white, sorry. Then you can Kema. If white answers, actually you can Tenuki one more time. So now my first question to you guys. How about the status of this black corner? What can white do? Can white even do anything to this black corner with the next move? Nobody has seen this or nobody knows what to do. Co maybe, all right, I hear some Co, but we don't like maybes. B3, clamp seems best, all right. Then I counter clamp. How do you do a Co here? Let me be like, yeah, let me spoil this. This is um, a Co, but you still, you are yet to find the Co because I counter clamped. If you just take the stone now, I am alive in the same shape as we just had. And I Tenuki twice and there is two cuts left, so super happy.
a4 wait a4 c3 yeah right that is the cohelion burn but the order is a bit off because you want to play like this and then you think i will play like this right and then you can make a call but how about i go here now so you can try to reduce me here but i am actually quite alive so the funny move here is a2 right away and then if black ataris we do the call like this so it is that call but i mean let's look at this call imagine black wins the call that is really really good for black i mean there is a cut left black is super strong and yeah it is true if white wins the call black is dead but black has quite some local threats with this move then capture back and then this move and uh, okay now white even has to invest another move inside and now if black wins the call it is even more devastating because white added two dead stones inside that don't do anything and black even got three so yeah i want you to feel the investment of this call for white this is quite an investment for white and that's why this block is maybe not even such a huge move. Like it is big, but what happens mostly is white exchanges g3 for b4 and then white just continues somewhere else. And when the time has come, black can play here or white can block there. And maybe at the moment when white blocks here, the core is already big enough. So black will maybe even answer in some way. All right, yeah, that's about these shapes where we want to get center by all at all costs. So when we do this, it is, um, I mean, we have to accept that the opponent will get a big influence. I mean, that's mainly the outcome. So this is something that I would suggest for players that like to play against influence, but if you're the type of player that um, actually has trouble against influence and and you don't like to play against Moyos and maybe you are the one who likes to build yourself, then maybe this move at 03 is not really for you. You should um, then, I don't know, maybe not even play Sun Sun at all or just play here right away and um, yeah, have the shape a bit more open and a little less strong for black. Ah, I just realized there's another very common, yeah, one in the 3-3, three, three, Joseki. So this move exists, right? Has any one of you ever played this move? I have never played this move as black, but my opponents have done it. Um, wait, let me read some comments. Maybe in a sense that it might not be the best depending on the rest of the board. I think I've also seen c3 instead of b4. Ah, okay. So as white, a different answer. Also no co threats in the opening. Yes, very true. So um, we will also talk about co in the opening actually. Um, yeah, I just realized there were some examples of that that I need to um, address. So this move, yeah, okay. I, I see some of you have never played this, but I am always happy when my opponent plays this. Okay, maybe not always, but I like to Tenuki this because now black has to add another move and, or black doesn't have to, but if black adds another move, I will get this. And now we have quite the devastating cut if the letter works. So let's imagine it works. I mean, cutting here is so big. Black cannot handle this. So black has to answer once again. And as we know, this shape in the corner is already alive. I hope all of you know this. One, two, three. L plus one. We jump. This is alive. So white tenukit. 
what one time and then two times and it's still alive so that is something you can do after this but of course again this is not bad for black this is um, just it, a way where black will have the influence and uh, white gets many moves and, uh, and white is flexible but I don't think that this is bad for black this is actually maybe the AI would say this is better for black but this is just a way we can be flexible in the opening and um, yeah I like to play like this um, to fight for Sante. So let us dig into some other examples I brought from my games. So what do we have here? All right, this is a very recent game I played. Yes, this is a game I played against Jeff. So for example, here, I didn't like to just um, defend my two stones and have black just continue by playing maybe even here. I thought that this is quite a comfortable shape for black if I play a normal variation like this and maybe black gets to yeah make the top side in a in a big scale I didn't like that I mean it's not like it's wrong it, it's fine to play like this but that's just my preference I didn't want black to have this on that day so I decided okay I do not necessarily have to finish this Joseki for the two stones so I decided to play here to also apply a little bit of pressure into the corner. <clears throat> and um, since black already had a low stone here, I thought the right side is not too interesting for black. So if black really wants to pincer me, I can also think about, I mean, I can still run out those stones, but I can also think about sacrificing them and just getting other moves because Black really needs quite some stones to completely surround these. Even now, white can still actually get out quite easily. I mean, white will be weak, but white is not dead. So black really needs... Uh, let's add another stone here. But then are you really sure that these stones are completely dead? I mean, I can still get something. And in the worst case, I can... I mean, worst case, this is even quite nice to take the corner like this. And my opponent added three moves. Let's count the moves. One, two, three moves to capture those two. And there is still some Argy. So this is the best case scenario of flexibility for white. Black would probably not accept this and try to capture it in a larger scale. So if black... If I was black, maybe I would be thinking about this and then next of white defense, I want to capture it like this. And then as white, I will feel a bit pressured because black is really getting a lot. Um, yeah, and, and black's efficient, efficiency is there. White cannot easily live in the corner anymore. So now I would have to think about something as white and maybe eventually I would add a move around here or... I would go into the corner right away. But yeah, that was my way here. And then was there something else interesting? All right, we had this move. So this is an example of imagine you're black and you don't really know how this variation goes. Like, can you cut? Do you know about the cut? What happens like this? I mean, if you know it, yeah, you can do it. Is it even good? Um, and here Jeff found a nice move for black to just logically make the variation fine for him without maybe necessarily having to know all the variations to this. So what's a nice move that black can play here? I mean, there are some moves, but... Um, Maybe you find exactly the one that Jeff has played, which was actually quite annoying to me. So he didn't cut, of course. That's uh, probably obvious from what I have said. He chose to play a different move. H3. Yes, very nice. Let's look at it. 
That is exactly the move. And now, what can white do? It's not so easy. Mm, the cut is still there. So actually, let's talk about the cut first. I think many people will cut because they are like, come on, this has to be the variation. I don't know it, but this has to be the variation. The cards, I mean, come on, there are so many weaknesses. White has d3, white has all these weak stones on the outside. Ah, come on, something has to work. Let me push here once again, and then now I will go for this move because I'm so fancy, I, I know so many nice moves, and, and then I play here, right, yes, now I got him. I will capture everything, and all of a sudden you realize that I mean, actually, right now, I'm not so sure how this ends. Maybe I should have thought a bit more about this. But um, this is super risky for both. So one, two, three, four, five against five. And some outside stuff. The moment black plays here, I win it. I win this. Do I? Da, 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 da. All right. Yeah, I think I win it. And then black is actually super bad in this game. There is a letter left and okay, let's say maybe black tries to go for it. Even worse, black is going to be crushed. So yeah, don't do this is basically all I'm trying to tell you. Um, and I, I see many people do this and I have done this as black sometimes because I thought, ah, this has to be the variation. Come on, there is a reason that, um, that this move is cool nowadays. There has to be some variation right now. So um, they go for the cut. But actually, Jeffs, as he is an experienced player, he went from this side. And actually, this was quite uncomfortable for me. I ended up playing this move, but let's look at this. Imagine um, how do we do this? Imagine all of these moves are gone. And white has a stone here and a stone here like this. So let's imagine in this variation black plays here. Okay, it's actually a fine move. It's not the best. But it's okay, white plays here, which is maybe also okay. But then black plays here and white plays this one, really? Looks a bit strange to me. And that's what I thought in the game, why I felt uncomfortable playing f3. But there wasn't really a better move. Like if I play here and go out, I still have the problem at e3 left, which is really annoying. So I didn't like this. Maybe it's an option, but I didn't want this. And if I played this one, then there is something like this left. Maybe not right away, but soon. So black can just leave it and uh, see, see what he can get. Maybe even jump and do this later. So yeah, black found a really nice way to handle this variation even though we probably this move is not i don't think jeff has seen this in any book this move he found it himself because um yeah because of logical reasoning and flexibility and because he knows that even though this cut can come to maybe something complicated he wouldn't want to lose the game because of this and he knows that if he just plays a, a normal move that Maybe this is locally even not the greatest uh, for the AI, but it is um, it is good for humans. Actually, his next move was here to try to look into the corner, try to make me over concentrated if I answer and I didn't want to answer. And it was actually quite interesting and, and flexible. I had trouble to to find the next move. Some comments. Aha, you saw something similar in a lecture. That's nice. All right, so let's get to a different examples. I still have some. Quite some. I mean, I need to fill some time. What is this? No, this is something I invented. This is, ah, this is my game. I played against Anti. He even went for the three space extension or pincer. 
And even then I didn't want to play this because... I mean, yeah, probably I will survive in this variation, but I had the feeling that I will end up in a slightly uncomfortable result that I don't really like. So I went with my safe way, which I like to do, which is this one. I already showed this. Actually, I wonder if, if Anti watching this agrees. I'm not sure if he's still watching this. I, as black, sometimes allow myself to play here because it is, because it is um, I mean, yeah, I did an empty triangle, okay. But actually it's not the worst move because of white extends, we can cut here. And if white goes for this, this can come to a disaster. And I have had this in many games. Those were more like blitz games. But my opponents were like, the opponent cuts here, he plays, he plays this connection. Come on, this cannot be a variation. I have to crush him now. And let's fight this till the end. And then I just played here and actually this corner is dead. There's nothing white can do. And if white, even worse, tries to honey right now, then it will come to this, which is instantly dead. I guess you know this. So not really an option to honey earlier. So the only thing white can really do here is to take the stone and let black have this. And this is actually a variation. AIA thinks this is a bit better for white because white also still has the flexibility to come from here and black, white is strong and white has sent it. But it is a safe way for black to play. Black gets the corner. I like to play like this as black sometimes. Um, and the other way white can deal with this is playing here, but this is also a little bit embarrassing for white. So the embarrassing I caused with my empty triangle here is the embarrassment that white causes by pushing here so many times. That's my reasoning. Yeah. So yeah, C4 is a possible move. Nice. I got the confirmation. Good, that's good. Yeah, and actually like this, black, black gets some influence, the corner can still, I mean, if black doesn't play, it can still be, okay, no, it's nothing. It's just a life, but actually no, white has to uh, answer this because this is, ah, no, sorry, I saw a ghost. This is a life, but still, this is a variation that black can do in the, in the, case he doesn't like the all of the these shenanigans with the cut here so yeah but this is not over we still had some flexibility in this opening coming from white next which is to tenuki here so maybe you have i mean i guess this is also common but there is a letter involved here which works right now for black and so white actually, I'm not sure if that was white's intention, but I felt like this was, let me read this letter, a letter breaker. Da, 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 da. It's not yet a letter breaker, but it's soon about to be. So um, yeah, that's also a way you can play. And I decided to very soon defend this but this is still not center white is still alive in the corner so white chose to get a locally bad result in the lower left corner to get a locally good result in the top right corner because i mean in the bottom left black has more moves and in the bottom right now white has more moves and i decided to tenuki this top right again i could have also added a move but i thought well um, I think the left side right now is more important. I'm strong at the bottom, so I want to pincer that stone at uh, around one. So I went for not this move, but this one. 
<clears throat> and white played here and I Tenuki'd again because I thought, well, can white really kill this in the next move if white plays here? I still have the possibility to, for example, get this exchange and get out like this. Of course, you if you don't know these shape moves, then you cannot escape and then you might die. But if you know them, that actually you can see that this is quite difficult for, for white to, to kill. If white goes through here, there are two cuts, so white has to defend and will lose this stone. And if white plays here, then I already kind of got out. I can just keep going out, even threatening another cut here. Or I can also try to live locally, or maybe more like this, which is, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do this. I should more think about getting out. So the, th the point is white got many moves and couldn't kill me, so I can still do this. Um, yeah. And I Tinuki it again. And um, no, did I? Yes. And only after white played this move, I thought, okay, now with the attack on my stones, white can really get a lot of influence and build the whole top side. So now for me, it was the time to decide now I have to do something for them. But before that, I thought if white takes the influence there, I can still destroy the, the top side and, and keep on playing and it's just a game. Um, but you shouldn't overdo it like you shouldn't do it just for the principle like because you know that uh, you can still live with this group so for example if i just add another stone here now i think white will get a really huge moyo on the top and i don't like to play against that so much if the and i think actually like this black will be in trouble so i decided now to move the stones Okay, do we have some question? If black played R18, then white R18, R then white R16 is a funny letter breaker. Yeah, let's look at that. R18. All right, so if I would have answered yeah, that's why I, I was afraid to answer because I thought um, the the letter is actually, I mean, maybe not right away, but as Auntie mentioned, this move, does it break a letter? Let's see, I answer. So let's all read this letter now. Why it goes there. Uh, Yes, ah, because this move will be self Atari eventually if there's a stone here. So yeah, this is a nice way and risky. So I decided to not dig into this and just defend it while I still can. Okay, let's look at some other variations. No, this is a single stone. some other games of mine. Yeah, so this one is just, for example, it's very common to Tenuki this C13 because you can still do so much afterwards. So if you get another move here, black even decided. So for example, this one, you can also Tenuki. Um, if you don't like taking the corner because you will end up in Gote and the opponent gets some nice influence, you can also decide to just Tenuki, as my opponent did. I think the opponent is again Jeff. And then I went for this. Black Tenuki again. I played in the top left. And Black could still live in this corner. Actually, it's really quite nice for black to this is how it continued and black gets a nice living in the corner if i play like this and if i go for this side black can easily make a position there so even though black tenukit once um 
or even twice at first and then added a move in the corner, White could still get quite a nice result. And also about the top left again, Black can also decide to Hane here and live in the corner. This is quite a small life, but in some cases it can be good. Here white gets really strong, but black even makes this incentive. So because white has to defend the outside. And even after white adds the other, the, the next stone here, white, black can still get a call. Like this, it's a call. It's a really, really strong call. And white gets amazingly strong, but white had two more moves. And imagine you do this at the very end when when there is already huge white's moyo. Um, imagine it's something like this. White has a huge moyo and then you just make a ko in that corner. That's really quite a nice option still. Yeah, so this game is a nice example of, of some tenukis in the opening because black just preferred to have a have a nice position on the right side and 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 wanted to play that kind of game. Okay, let's go to another opening. All right. So here we talk about ko. Ko in the opening is very interesting. Just some stuff. Black has a huge moyo and white Invades. I invaded. I was white. So now this call. We first have to determine how important this call is. Like, as white, I thought I don't have to win this call because black already had the big advantage here. And if black loses this call, I mean, actually, black also played flexibly to potentially lose this call. But let's imagine I would have taken the core like this and black takes this. Then I get quite some nice shape next, but it is not terrible. Like black can still, still has a huge influence. So to me, this core threat was actually not, um, I, I should answer because I thought even locally this exchange 016 for N17 is kind of good for white. So then I played this threat and it went on like this. So I made black even stronger in the corner, but I got a nice threat. So actually this core at the bottom right to me, I, I thought it was quite flexible. Um, I didn't really have to win it, but that's also, I mean, it doesn't happen too often in openings. This is something that happens when there is such a huge moyo and and you invade there. Let me see if there are some comments. Looks familiar. Yes, that's our game. I guess many of these uh, games look familiar to Jeff and also to Auntie. Yeah, but let me show you another classic that I just realize that it's also about ko i guess you have seen this attachment is it this one ah no it's not like this it is right it's this one no this so here there is also some co-possibility sometimes that I see early on. So when the opponent plays here, in general, you shouldn't always just think about answering this. Actually, in the opening, it can be quite good to ignore this. And when white captures, you can play co-threat even if it is only this one, white connects and then you take it like this. Black's corner is still pretty safe. Um, of course, white can take advantage, but um, 
Black also got a really nice shape at the bottom left. So let's maybe try to make the opening a little bit more realistic and actually put a game. So something like this, the opponent played here. Uh, and then like this, very early on. So at this moment, you can maybe ask, how about I play here? And if white captures, you can make quite the nice co-threat. But also you shouldn't overdo it because, yeah, I just realized. If now black just captures back, white can also just take a big move. And if black connects, white can still play here. So actually, you want to win the co as black like this. But this is quite the big investment. So if you play here, you really want to win the co. So this means that you will actually play some, yeah, you have to play some big threats because now at the moment you lose the co, you have two stones that are basically what we call trash because they don't really have any clear future. They can easily be sacrificed and it's two moves that you invested. So if you do this, you really want to win the co. And that is quite an investment. So you should really know that, that you win it. But also if you start doing two terrible threats like this one, which is not such a great move, then you already made some bad exchanges in the lower left. I mean, this lower left is like white even got another move at C5 and black made some bad exchanges. So now white can also be flexible to sacrifice this core. And... I mean, black's shape at the top is really strong, but I prefer white on this board because white has gotten Sente again and um, and a really nice shape in the bottom left. So, um, yeah, I would prefer white here. Let's see some comments. Yes. So, I guess... Yeah, that tends to lead to messy games because if there is some co in the in the opening like that, everybody tries to play some fancy moves. So I can imagine the moment white plays here, some players will go for this one maybe. I have seen stuff like this because they value the co at the top very much and they are thinking like, okay, if white plays here, I'm going to start the co and then play this amazing threat at the cross cut and I prepared it early on. But they don't think so much about what if white just answers. I mean, locally the exchanges at the bottom left are pretty bad for black and then white just goes like this. Okay, congrats, you won the co, but the bottom left is just destroyed. This is also I would prefer white here actually. And um, so you shouldn't overdo it with these calls and both players should, should be flexible. So uh, you shouldn't try to win the call too hard. That's a tendency that, that I heard from, from players that in Europe, European Go players try to win the call too much and they don't think so much about losing the call. That is something that Jeff told me actually. And uh, whenever you start a call, you should actually first think about how can I lose the call and get something flexible out of it and get, yeah, and actually make some, mm, get some big moves on the outside instead of how do I play the, the hurting threats to necessarily win this call. Uh, so yeah. Keep that in mind. First, think about how to lose the code, then how to win it. That's just a side hint. You can actually win some games like that um, just by one code. That is um, where many European players um, are too tense about the code and they lose a lot on other moves just because they have to win that code. All right. Let's go to some other example. I still have some, I think. 
What's this? Right, that's that. <laughs> We had this example as well. We had this example. We had this one as well. Ah, right. I remember something that I see saw recently. So this is white. You can tenuki this. I guess you have seen this. And then it oftentimes comes to this kind of a move. Something like this. So actually, I remember that Oscar had this in, in his last lesson or lecture. Um, how to think about this, this group as at one. And this also has a lot to do about flexibility in the opening. Because black already invested, um, I mean, white tenuki once after b6. Then black took the next move. And now you can think about extending with this group or so on, but this group at one is actually really strong. I mean, it's so hard to attack. You can still get some resources at, on this Kema using the, um, the cut at B7. And you can, uh, I mean, of course, right now you can still extend, but you can get out into the center. So how about black tries to pincer this from afar? This is really not so far, so uh, too far actually to really attack this. So IS White will just take another stone. So then Black adds another move to actually attack it. And then I can decide, okay, now I start moving it. These stones I will get in the center also have some value. But I can even, if I want to go extreme, Tenuki again. And it's still not easy for Black to attack this. So. Black can try to push, but at this moment, black has a cut left behind at d8. So if black defends, I can just make some shape here, or I can lean on this stone. And it's really easy for white to escape here. Now you have to evaluate, is this position that black gets towards the top worth so much? In this case, actually no, because white has, in this example, a really strong shape here at one. So this would really be worth it to Tenuki and white got three moves on the right side just for black to get this one. So maybe if we are a bit more realistic, some of you may ask how about black attacks in a bit more aggressive scale. Okay, so now I feel like, yeah, this one is already a bit closer. Maybe actually I would answer now. But is this exchange really good for black? One for two? I mean, black still has the one stone, which is lonely and, and can be pincered. So if black just keeps playing later, there can be some invasion here. And if black takes care of that, white can just, I mean, actually black should first play here. <laughs> Otherwise white gets to lean on that really, really nicely. And actually now white can think about tenukiing but if white tenukis, the shape is not so great, so maybe white will just add another move. Hmm, where to add it? Let's say here. I, I don't love the move, but it's trying to prove my point that white is still very strong and will get maybe even another move. So yeah, with this shape, you can also be very flexible in the opening. I think I have shown all my examples. So I'm trying to think about some other variations. For example, I mean some Joseki variations. Something I thought of earlier is, let's say you played here and the opponent played this move and you don't really know the variation. So how to deal with this? First of all, when you play here, maybe you should actually know about this variation because the opponent can just play it and if you don't know it, and it can become a mess. As you play more and more, you will find more of these dangerous moves and these Josekis you just have to learn. I mean, let me show you just the beginning. Because if you don't learn this then and make some mistake here, 
you can get crushed early on. I used to trick my opponents like this back when I was 1Q and I'm not proud of it because it's not a noble way of, of playing a game. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, Oscar called that a golden group. Yeah, we could also do some, some open questions, actually. Do you have some Josikis that you would like to look at? I mean, I cannot promise you that I know them. I just know how to avoid them, basically. <laughs> that's, that's my strength, I guess. Um, yeah. So what I, I want to finish my point here. Maybe as long as you don't know this, Joseki, you can also, okay, just accept this. I know it is painful, but maybe you can at least get Sente. You can still play here or you can also just Tenuki. So what I'm trying to tell you is if you don't know a Joseki, you should try to finish it locally as quick as possible and in a peaceful way like we did here at the top. And especially you have to accept that the outcome is not perfect. Um, one second, I have to put my computer to charge, otherwise I will die on you. Yes, there you go. So what I was saying is, you have to accept sometimes that if you don't know a variation, the result will not be perfect. But if we talk objectively, this top right, maybe on the AI you lose like, I don't know, I don't know the number. I would guess 1%, 2%, maybe 3%. But uh, then later on in the game, try to remember what kind of mistakes you did to lose a game. And uh, yeah, you just have to wait for one of those from the opponent and all of a sudden this top right will just be not in your mind anymore. Um, so finish the result quick, quickly without too many complications. And uh, if you can, incentive, just like here, just so you can play somewhere else. Or if you don't know it, you can also choose to not even start the Joseki. So for example, here, if you don't know many variations, maybe this is not the best examples because of course you also should know some variations on this. You cannot always, ah, my opponent plays here. All right, I don't know anything. I always Tinuki. I mean, eventually you will have to learn it. But just know that it's an option to Tenuki. If you if the opponent plays from here, you can still get something from this side. And if the opponent plays from here, I learned in a book that you can play this move and then you can play this move and have a flexible shape. Yeah. 5%. Yeah, maybe it's also 5% loss. Don't push and cut, don't press. I don't know what the comment referred to, but I guess maybe to something here. Um, and yeah, I think the, the most important, uh, one of the most important lectures actually to me, I want to submit today is, if you don't know this move, for example, at C4, don't just go for the cut just because you think it has to be the variation. That's a mistake I think I did quite often. So either, I mean, even if Black Tinook is here, it's not a big deal. The cut is still left there. <clears throat> Maybe some opponents will even answer because they are worried and then you're happy to get two other moves. So don't just go for a variation that you don't know just because you want to show um, you want to show off, you want to show that you, um, wait, there is a question. You want to show that you know so much and you want to show that you play the hard Joseki. So Prince Alina has a question. Three, four, low approach, two space, low pr pincer, knights press. Yes, push and cut. So I think we're talking about something I like to avoid. <laughs> Two space low pincer. Are you talking about this? Okay. 
if you are talking about this, then I have to disappoint you because I don't know this variation. But still, I won't lose a game because of this. And I'll tell you why. It is because at this moment, the first thing I will think about is there a way I can Tinuki this? And the next thing I'm like, okay, maybe this corner is important. Let me just play here. That's my bad habit, but is it really so bad? I mean, I think it's worse to play this and lose the game because somebody plays this one and then you don't know the variation, how it continues. Wait, no, this is not the move. I think it's this. If this would happen in my game, another problem is I would really use like half of my time to not die in this corner and I might have managed to get an acceptable result here, but um, I eventually will have not enough time for the rest of the game. I tricked the 9p with this, but otherwise I like to avoid this. I mean, yeah, you can also go in the shed and practice and, and prepare for these variations, and then you can be the one to trick the opponent with this. But how about you practice whole weekend, five hours a day about this, variation and then your opponent just says okay let me play this one won't you feel so bad maybe that's a good uh final final word so yeah i guess we we have done we have learned quite a lot today many joseki variations lots of things to think about for the opening and yeah thanks for watching and i will leave you guys at that that's what Shin Jin So does. He practices more than 12 hours a day. Yeah, when you're at that level, you need to know those variations. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for listening. Bye.